Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we'll make some ham and cheese rolls. They're like sausage rolls, but instead of puff pastry, we'll use some yeast dough. So instead of being flaky and crunchy, they'll be soft and chewy. And if that's something that you're into, keep watching. Because this perfect beer snack is super easy to make. Handmade is always better than store-bought, am I right? And as always, you'll find full details with all the weights and measurements in metric and imperial units down in the description box. So let's begin with the equipment that we need. A tray with some non-stick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a brush, a temperature probe, a rolling pin, and a serrated bread knife. You can use a regular knife, but make sure it's super sharp. Now let's get on to the ingredients. We'll need some strong white bread flour, some milk, yeast, salt, sugar, some soft butter, an egg, you also need some seeds, I'm using sunflower seeds, some diced smoked ham, some cheese, and some caramelized onions. The last three ingredients will obviously be for the filling. I'm making the filling super easy. Just mix the ham, the cheese, and the onions together, and there you go. And you can fill these rolls with whatever you like. It doesn't have to be ham and cheese. This is what I had in my fridge, and that's why I'm making them. Now before we begin, my kitchen is around 23 degrees C, so I want my milk to be around the same temperature. Right before we make our main dough, we need to make a pre-ferment called a flying sponge. We'll use all of the milk, all of the yeast, and a little bit of the flour. And the process is very simple. We just mix it all together, cover it up, and leave it to ferment. The flying sponge will give us better flavor and better texture. And once you've mixed it, cover it up, leave it to proof for around one hour. It should visibly puff up. You should clearly see bubbles in it. And this seems about right to me, so let's uncover it. If you shake it, you can see it wobbles, so it means it's full of air. And you can also see all the bubbles as I'm pulling my scraper through it. If your sponge doesn't look like this, leave it to ferment for longer. But if it does, add your salt, add your sugar, add the butter, and give it all a good mix. We want to mix thoroughly to dissolve all the sugar crystals. And once that's done, we can add the rest of the flour. And that's the last ingredient for the dough. Now once again, grab your scraper and keep mixing. You want to mix until there's no more dry flour left and the dough is in one piece. And if the scraper doesn't do the trick, continue on with your hand. So once the dough has come together, we can start kneading it. This is not a very sticky dough, so I'm using a regular kneading method. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand, and then using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn and repeat. And once you've done this a few times, it'll become a fluent motion. We don't have to knead this dough for a very long time. Three to five minutes will do. And once it's nice and smooth and not so sticky, get in the bowl and take the temperature. 26 to 27 degrees C is just about right for me. Now cover it up and leave it to ferment for 45 minutes. If your dough is cooler, it will take longer. If it's warmer, it will take less time. Remember that. But after the first proof, we need to give it a fold. By folding, we will degas the dough will create extra layers in the gluten structure and we will equalize the temperature. So it's quite beneficial. To perform a fold, place the dough on your table, smooth side down, flatten it out, then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until it reaches the point where you started. Then you can pinch the bottom together, place it back in a bowl, make sure the smooth side is pointing up, then cover it up again and we'll leave it to proof for 45 more minutes. And now you should really see it rise. And now it's time to roll the dough out. You want to use a little bit of flour at this point, just to prevent it from sticking. But don't go crazy, it's always easier to add than to take off. So sprinkle both sides with flour, and then start off by hand, just press the dough out. All you want to do is to flatten it using your fingers. And this dough is not sticky at all, so it's very easy to work with. Definitely a good recipe for a beginner to tackle. So once you've pressed your dough out, we can continue on with the rolling pin. Now we need to try and roll it into a large rectangle. And you know, do it gradually, take your time, there's no rush. And once you've rolled it out, get your scraper and cut it into two long pieces. We will fill each of the pieces with a filling, separately. And like I mentioned earlier, you can use whatever filling you like. You can even put some minced meat in here. If you do decide to use a ham and cheese, press it down, compress it like I did here. This will make it a lot easier to handle. And now all you need to do is take half of your filling, fill it in one piece of dough, and then use the other half in the other one. And again after filling, you can press the ham and cheese together so it's one cohesive piece. It'll make it a lot easier to wrap the dough around it. Now grab the egg, 
and brush one edge of the dough. This will be the glue that will keep everything together. And now all we need to do is carefully lift the dough up and roll it over. You want to roll it tight so it presses against the filling. But don't go too crazy, you don't want to tear a hole in it. Just be gentle but firm. And once you've rolled it over, press it down just to seal it up properly. And you can roll it seam side up afterwards and pinch the seam together. And now it's definitely not going anywhere. And as I said before, just do it slowly, there's no rush. When you rush things, that's when mistakes happen. Right, now it's time to cut these into bite-sized pieces. And a serrated knife will work best. You can cut these bigger or smaller, that's up to you. I normally go for the size of my thumb. And make sure when you're cutting these, go in a sawing motion back to front, not up and down. If you cut straight down, you risk the filling squeezing out the sides. So they're ready for their final proof. Now just arrange them on your tray with some nonstick paper. Make sure to leave a bit of space between them. So during the final fermentation, you want to preheat your oven to 160 degrees C with a fan on. And look at these babies, they already look good. Can't wait for them to come out of the oven. So we need to cover them up now, and leave them to ferment for the last time. It will take around one hour. Because they are quite small, you will not see a dramatic change in size. But they should definitely puff up a bit. And these ones look just about right. If you see them leaning to one side, make sure you straighten them out. Otherwise when they bake they might topple over. Right, there's one more thing we need to do before baking. Let's brush them with egg and sprinkle them with seeds. Final touches are always important. And you can use any seeds you like. I chose sunflower seeds this time because they're quite big. They'll give me a big crunch. But whatever you choose, just sprinkle them all over. Be generous. A little tip here is to press the seeds in with your hands, just so they stick better. But just be gentle, don't mash them up. Let's get them in the oven now. They'll take around 25 minutes or so. And once they're golden brown and puffed up, they're ready. And how about that? Homemade beer snacks. They're super easy to make, the customization is endless, you can fill these with whatever you like. Let me know down in comments if you tried this recipe. And if you have any questions or suggestions, drop them also down in comments. And if you are not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. I make bread baking videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And I have a whole playlist with recipes using pre-ferments, so check it out in the top right corner now. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.